palata. <risa> My beloved child, I miss you. Amidst your busy life, I long for our connection. No matter how far you've strayed, I'm ready to embrace you. I know the weight you carry. You don't have to carry them alone. Come home. I long to celebrate your return. Forgiveness is waiting for you. A feast is waiting for you. I am here and you are deeply loved. Direct okay na. Ay okay na. Hello, good evening everyone. <laughs> take take 58. So good evening once again. Hello everyone, uh, mga ka-feasters, brothers and sisters. My name is Dearden and welcome to Feast Makati, Legaspi. Ayan, palakpakan niyo naman ang inyong mga sarili. If you are here on site and also online sa 10,000 subscribers natin, hello po. So stay tuned uh, because blessings are bound to be here. And are you ready to be blessed? Parang mahina. Are you ready to be blessed? Yes, yes we are. Kaya naman. Can we all stand up? Ayan, sige. If you can, and of course, um, just just be ready. Let's all be ready for God's blessings. Kaya naman, um, I'd like to congratulate you for being here today and being online because you have chosen to be here. Amen? Kahit na medyo kanina ay umaambon, huwag na lang ako pumunta. Ay, ang dami kong work. Mag-overtime ako. But I have lots of excuses. That you, you, that's why, kaya congratulations to us because we've chosen Jesus over anything and everything. Kaya palakpakan nyo yung mga sarili. Kaya there's a lot in store for us tonight. Do you believe that, brothers and sisters? Yes, because we have come home. Kanina nakita nyo na yung welcome home. Kaya naman, let's all be ready for God's embrace tonight. Amen? Ayan, sige. So, let's come in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for the blessings that's, our, that's coming our way. You know for a fact where we are at the moment because you know, Lord, what we need. And you know, Lord, when you will give that. And Lord, tonight, we are preparing ourselves, letting go of anything and everything that's not of you so that we'll be able to receive all the blessings that will come our way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen, Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's get ready to worship Him. Come on. Come on, everybody. Let's sing our heart out. Hallelujah. If you believe in God, you will sing to Him and sing for Him together as one peace family. Everybody now. God of my past, God of my present and future. Come on, let's take a heart out. I'm bounded by time, I'm changing forever and never. Let every breath declare all your glory and power. We sing. Let every voice. Of your praises forever. Come on, everyone. From the mountains deep to the valleys low, from the ends of the earth, all creation sing hallelujah. 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 Praise you, Jesus. We will sing of your greatness, O oh God. Praise you, God. Forever reign. Great is your love. Hallelujah. Great is your love as fast as the seas and the oceans. My heart and your hands, the same hands it crafted me. Your mighty name, Jesus, your name is 
So I encourage you, let's get in, let's be that kind of people na pag nagpo-work na worship hindi tayo yung tipong sige play, pray lang tayo konti, basa tayo ng lyrics parang karaoke. Then upo na para talk. Grab this opportunity when we pray. Kasi this we can't do on our own in our home. You can watch this online, but when we worship God at the start and at the end, ibe, we are together transported into another element to another place to God's throne room and as Catholics and as Christians we believe that God is here so when you lift up your hearts to God when you lift up your thanks to God when you lift up your concerns to God He embraces you He listens He hears He ministers to you and He is with you Amen, Amen. Let's give a little round of applause Hallelujah Welcome home everybody can you tell someone beside you welcome home it's, it's, it's such a joy to see each other again. And again, if you're joining us for the first time, we've been meeting regularly on site since June. So, medyo, we're getting the hang of it now. And can we give a little round of applause? Tapos na yung pandemic. We can gladly say, tapos na yung pandemic. And we continue to protect ourselves and still pray. But talagang, we thank God that the pandemic is done. So, welcome to the feast. If this is your first time to join us, welcome home. We know that you thought you were brought here by a friend or by someone or by an ad, but Jesus used all of that to bring you here. And so may this be your Thursday habit. We call this hashtag my Webes habit. Pakasabing ayan? Webes habit. When you post about tonight, pakilagan yan. So that people know that you're regularly blessed here. 
this is your webest hangout. This is your web, webest happy place. And that's why we call Thursday our webest. Because this is the day in the week that we get recharged, we get blessed, we get reminded of what we need to do to live good. Amen? Amen. Can, you tell the, can you introduce yourselves to the persons beside you? Kung mga hindi nyo pakilala, pakilala nga kayo. Mga nasa likod, mga hindi nyo kilala nasa likod nyo. Say hi. Name, name, name. Yeah, names. While you're doing that, I'd like to greet everybody online who's watching. Thank you for joining us. Please do us the favor. Please share this broadcast. Please tag 23 friends so that they can see what you're, what's blessing you tonight. And please be very active in the comments. We'd love to make others find out what is blessing us here. And make a point the next time, sama kay dito if you can. All right. Mga kapatid, my name is Brother Tor Lova. It's my joy to journey with you. Tonight, we begin a brand new series. Bigyan natin si Lord ng malik, magandang wow. <laughs> Bakang totoo naman yun. <laughs> But we, uh, I love new starts kasi syempre pag medyo tapos na yung series parang gusto mo na matapos gusto mo refresh. Tonight, new series. And the title of and for, and for two years we have done this technique. We have studied the first books of the Bible. We studied the first four so far. Tonight, we begin the fifth book of the Bible. It's called Deuteronomy. Pakasabi, Deuteronomy. Paano ba pronounce yun? Deuteronomy. The title of our series for the next nine weeks is Dear Prodigals. Can you say that? Pakisabi sa katabi mo, Dear Prodigal. Ganda na title. Actually, it will reveal itself in this first talk. But through this series, let's journey together and allow the Lord to speak to us through Deuteronomy. Nung Leviticus, may battle cry tayo. Eh. Ano naalala niyo ba yun? Let us, Leviticus. Deuteronomy, mahirap-hirap. Sige, sabi mo sa tabi mo. Dito na we, Deuteronomy. <laughs> Pwede? Oy, natawa? Pwede, pumasa. Alright. So please, hashtag, Dito na we, Deuteronomy. Let's start off by prayer for it. Pray here in the feast. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Together. Today, I receive all of God's love for me. Today, I open myself to the unbounded. Limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. To reopen myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. To reopen myself to God's word. So I become more like Jesus every day. Today I proclaim that I'm God's beloved. I'm God's servant. I'm God's powerful champion. Because I am blessed, I'm blessing the world in Jesus' name. Amen. Lift your hands towards God's word. Let's honor him as we sing. fresh word into our lives tonight, Lord. Give us what we need to live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Alright. Before I let you sit down, crash course. I don't know if you remember journeying through the past four books of the Bible. So we're in the fifth. So just an, as an idea, we went through four deep dives in the Bible. So uh, the, what are the five first books of the Bible? Sige nga. Lesson. First is Genesis. Next is Exodus, third is Mark, De. Leviticus, sige, flash na natin. Fourth is Numbers, and fifth is Deuteronomy. So, pinagdana natin in two years. Grabe, no? In, well, in, yeah, in two years. So, we're blessed here at the feast that we don't use the feast anymore to just give light messages. We, we were in that season. Now, we wanted to get motivational messages before. But through the feast, we're going deep dive into these messages. Pero nakaka-extract tayo ng napakagandang word na relevant sa atin ngayon. We are looking through these five books in a different way, through the eyes of Jesus, a Jew in ancient times. So Jesus, we're not looking at it as To or as, as, as Monique, as whoever, as Joseph. In the present time, we're looking at it as Jesus would have looked at it. So nabigyan na ng much magandang richness at kahulugan sa buhay natin ngayon. So recap. The first five, uh, the first four series that we had, number one starts with Genesis. And naalala niyo yung title? Sige nga, before we flash it. Ako hindi ko na naalala actually if hindi ko na research ulit. The title of our Genesis series is Blessing and Curse. 
Nalala nyo yan? Hindi. <laughs> Again, you can watch it online. It's all online if you wanna catch up. But this was given, we started this in June 2022. So one year ago. So multiple stories ang Genesis. We have Noah's Ark. We have um, Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel. Pero ang message na nakuha natin na is we have a choice. And it's up to us whether we choose blessing or curse. Preach to the person beside you. Tell that person, always choose blessing. The second book in the Bible is Exodus. Pakasabi Exodus? Ano yung title? Game. Nalala nyo? Special delivery. So special delivery. So ang, ang message of Exodus is, oh, well, we did it September 2022. I love this series because it was about rescue. Napaka hugot masyado yung series ito. This was when Moses rescued the Israelites, pulling them out of Egypt, bringing them to Mount Sinai. So ang ganda kasi ang message is, God will rescue you. Can you preach that to someone beside you? God will rescue you. Type that in the comments. God will rescue you. Moses brought them out and rescued them. The third book is Leviticus. And ang title is, nalala nyo? Assume ko na lang hindi talaga. Closer. <laughs> Ako nakalimuto ko rin actually. <laughs> Memory gap. Leviticus, we started January of this year. So nag-2023 nag na tayo. In Closer, we found out that God's law so really meant not to enslave us, but to bring us closer to Him. He was giving us certain laws and regulations so malaman natin paano lumapit sa Kanya. So pray this. Keep me closer to you, Lord. The fourth was the last na. Ito, siguro naalala niyo na, game. Hindi ko flash Ano yung fourth? Wilderness. Alright. The fourth book was Numbers. It's all about wilderness. So the Numbers, we gave it May. Medyo recent. So through Numbers, it was a wilderness journey. And natutunan natin, to get out of your wilderness and to get into the promised land, you have to trust and obey God. Kung hindi pa ikot-ikot ka lang sa wilderness mo. Ganda nun. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, trust and obey God. And so finally, tonight, we begin the fifth book at the last of this first five books, the Deuteronomy series entitled, Dear Prodigals. Say that. Dear Prodigals. And I want you to be very excited about this fifth book. Title pa lang, medyo hugot na. Title pa lang, alam na natin ang pinaka-message natin. And you want to know, before I flash what the one big message is, for those who don't know, the series that we give here at, feast, at the feasts are centralized. Brother Bo and the Bible nerds, we call them, they, they conceptualize, they pray about the message, they craft it, then they distribute it to all the builders. So if you go to the Makati feast, you go to the Mandaluyong feast, you go to the, the Mars feast, the Jupiter feast, pare pareho yung talk background, but delivered specially through the stories of the builder. Kaya hindi ka pare pareho, pero medyo same yung basis. But every in between feasts, binibigyan ng builders ng chance to preach whatever he feels na kailangan ng tao. So in between Numbers and De Deuteronomy, we had a special series. Naalala nyo yun? Kung anong series yun? Comeback series. The comeback series was born out of a prayer. Lord, anong gusto mong sabihin natin sa Legaspi Feast? Sa Legaspi Zens? And so the Lord gave us that message, come back. Nung narinig ko yung message ng Talk 1, Kinilabutan ako. Kasi the message of Talk One is come home. Talk One's message, Talk One's title is come home. So kung hindi ka pa nakinig sa comeback series, kung nagdududa ka pa na pinapauwi ka na ni Lord, this is the message confirming that. Kung binubulong pa lang ni Lord sa'yo, anak, come back na. Sinisigaw na niya, anak, it's time to come home. So I want to speak to a person who has been far away from God, who has been avoiding God, who has been deep into sin or deep into that per into his or her guilt na feeling niya hindi siya makakawin. I want to speak to someone who has prioritized other things, who has many distractions pulling them away from their purpose and from their Savior. To that person, if this is you, and I think this is all of us. God is inviting you. It's time to come home. We'll learn more about this as we journey through Deuteronomy. And allow God to speak to you and invite you 
to come home. Father, speak your words into our hearts and teach us, Lord, how to truly come home. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a round of applause. Thank you, everybody. Take your seats. Thank you, worship team. Thank you, dear Dan. All right. Okay. Wow, we're full. I mean, we're filled up. Full. You're being full. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the feast. For every first timer who is with us, welcome home. We hope you make yourself feel comfortable because this is your Thursday habit. Again, kung medyo puno na tayo, don't worry. We can add seats. We can move up to here. Dito na ako next time. Don't worry. We can fit a lot here. We're just spacing it out para hindi sobrang sikip. But if talagang as we see tonight, those are online. We're full here. We are filled up here rather. And I love it because God is speaking to this crowd. Amen? Tell someone beside you, welcome home. All right. For those who are online, again, please be very active in the comments. Help us grow here. And to those who are here, I want us to continue to grow here. Amen? Can we grow here? Not physically, kasi ang laki na natin. Kailangan natin mag lose. But I want us to grow here in our faith. But I also want us to grow here. And the ways we can grow here, just a few announcements, is to allow us to be blessed here. The way to be blessed is here. A very good acronym. Number one, bit bit. Bless, bring someone. If you can bring someone next Thursday, that would be great because you're helping someone also be blessed. I love, I love it. My wife brought her best friend here, Sansi Edeline. Sansi Ann, yan, nandyan sila. So bring one person. You don't have to bring a barangay. Just bring someone sa tingin nyo na ang ilangan. Another is light groups. If you can, join a light group. A light group is a group of people from this feast who meet on another day. They meet sa Popeyes. They meet sa Tim Horton. They meet sa ilala ng puno ng Ayala Triangle. And they just grow together. They say, Oy, ang galing ng na sinabi ni Lord sa akin through the worship last Thursday. Ano ikaw? Ano natutunan mo? Another is to eat. Sabihin niyo nga, eat. Dito, we encourage you to eat. Again, we have food there. We want to thank Charm for giving us bakola delicacies. Sanji si Charm. Ayan, sana umabot sa inyo kasi ubusin ko yan later. <laughs> yan, for, and we have food here. So we want to take our sandwich sisters and all those who contribute every Thursday for our food. But also eat here. I want you to receive and to partake and to participate in what the Lord is giving you. Next is to be, to serve. Eventually, sana isipin nyo, eventually, hindi lang ako lagi nakaupo dito. Eventually, tatayo din ako at magsaserve. Either I help pray for the feast, either I help um, sing in front, or I, I help bring food. Any service is important, I tell you. Even if you're just on, you're not just online. Even if you're online, serving can be sharing this broadcast, can be tagging a friend, can be saying, hoy, welcome here. And finally, what's the last S? Share. There, um, for those who are regular here, we like to invite you to help the feast out because financially we have to provide for this beautiful place in, in the heart of Makati. So we're going to flash for those who are online our bank account details. We have Union Bank, Gcash, and BDO. For those who are here, there's a white envelope there. If you don't have, you can just ask. Write your prayer intentions. We will pray for that. Write your thanksgiving. We will thank, you for, thank God with you for that. But also place a love offering so we can help fund this feast. And I'm going to, I'm going to pray a blessing to flow back to those who are giving. That is so we can continue because we run on donations. This isn't something that we fund from a rich uncle or something. This is us taking care of our house. Amen? Tell someone beside you, Tara, let's grow here. All right, let's give a round of applause. Let's begin. Dear prodigals, intriguing title. Alam you prodigal, no? You know the prodigal son, so... Come home. Na, kinalubot na talaga. Ano sabi ko, galing. When I, when I prepared the talk na come back, wala akong idea sa topic. Kaya nung dumating talk one, come home, ay galing ni Lord. Talagang pinapauwi tayo. Hindi pa doon. Mamaya na yun, Lord. Pero come home. So we're gonna dive deep into the book of Deuteronomy. Pakasabi Deut- Deuteronomy. You know the author of Deuteronomy? Si Jotar Ocampo. Ancient writer. Matagal na siya, hindi nakakita. Wala na siya dito. <laughs> Alright. So, are you ready to dive deep into Deuteronomy? So, for the first timer, sorry. Ngayon pa lang papasensya. Hingin ako pasensya. At ganun ho ang uso dito. Tito jokes. Alright. So, again. So, I love this. Because Deuteronomy has been a mystical book. Has been a 
weird and complex book. Actually, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, medyo complex, di ba? Pero pumasa tayo. Nakalusot tayo sa Leviticus, Numbers. Kasi alam natin, Genesis. Napakaganda yung story. Si Joseph, the dreamer, si Noah. Si Exodus, ang galing. Cinematic. Yung Mount Sinai. Pero Numbers, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, panay batas. Panay kakulitan ng Israelites. So Deuteronomy, we're gonna study that. And it's the last book of the five book collection. The name, just to give an idea, the name of these five books, they're called the Torah. Pakasabe. Or Pentateuch, or Pentateuch. Or it could be translated as to law. Itong five books Genesis, Exodus, Numbers, Leviticus, baliktad, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Itong first five books ng Jewish Bible din. Ginagamit din ng Jewish to. And it's called the law. Pentateuch, Tuk, or Torah. It's called law, appropriating law, kasi these five books contain the famous, ito famous sa Israelites, if you ask a Jew, famous sa kanilang 613 laws of Moses. Kung hindi nyo na na-memorize ang Ten Commandments, dahil sampu sila, eh lalo na to. Brother to, 613. Nasa lima pa lang ako. Nakalimutan ko na. Ang bigat kasi ng word law. Say law. When you hear the word law, for, for people like me who grew up religious, who grew up in, in a Catholic community, in a Catholic upbringing, ang dating na law, brother to, may mga bawal. Brother to, ang law, KJ. Brother to, strict. May parusa, pag hindi ginawa. If you make labag the law, may parusa the law. Tell someone beside you, don't make labag the law. So law to us is very... Medyo negative, di ba? Kasi parang batas, parang the law of traffic, the law of ano, na hindi mo pwede kung nagkamali ka, huli ka. But in Hebrew, let's change that. In Hebrew, the real translation for the Torah is not exactly law, it's really teaching. Pakasabi, teaching. And tonight, we're gonna make a mind shift. I want you to see these law in these laws, these 613 laws in ancient times, these Moses laws, as teachings more than laws. And there's a humongous change. Pag pinaltan niyo yung isip niyo, na hindi siya law, pero teaching siya. We must read the first five books, not as God's laws for all eternity, but as God's teachings for all eternity. Get it? Let's look at these first five books, these 613 laws, not as laws for all eternity. Let's see that slide. But as teachings for all eternity. Brother, ito pareho lang yun. <laughs> it sounds the same. Laws, kasi ganito. Laws sometimes mean or connote permanent. Hindi pwedeng paltan. It's either black or white. It's either follow or disobey. Laws are thought of as unchanging, as harsh, and a strict. Ang teaching naman, ang dating, para sa ikabubuti mo. You got the difference? Ang law, para ang dating, harsh, strict, patay kang bata ka pag hindi mo ginawa. Ang teaching, kung anong ginawa mo dito, para sa ikabubuti mo. Mas maganda, no? Mas maganda ang dating, pag ang, law, ang pinapakinggan natin, or sunusundan natin, ay teaching sa atin. And that's why this is important, is because the 613 laws were written for a specific time and place. These 613 laws in the first five books of the Bible, which you will uncover more in Deuteronomy, was written for a specific time and place. Brother to, hindi ba permanent? Ang thou shall not kill, thou shall not commit adultery. Ibig mo sabihin, pwedeng paltan? Pwedeng baguhin? Pwedeng itweak? May, may loophole? Aren't God's commands permanent? Unchangeable, always applicable, carved in stone, and uneditable. We will learn tonight that you cannot just copy paste yung 613 laws na nasa Bible into 2023. Kung hindi, ma, hindi, hindi mo kaya. There's actually a YouTuber who tried to do that. Ginawa niya, sundan ko kaya tong 613 laws. Gawin ko ngayon. And the laws are written for a specific time for a specific place. So we will learn tonight na maraming laws we will discover in this series na hindi na applicable ngayon. 
What? So, paano pa, brother, to? And here's a guide. Itong bottom line. How will I know, brother, to, kung itong batas, itong sinulat na teaching no unang panahon, ay dapat pa rin gawin ngayon? I want you to take a photo of this next slide when we flash it. Ito yung guide nyo. Ito yung rule nyo. Ito yung ginagamit ng mga scholars sa mga talagang nag-aaral ng Bible na basis to know if what you're doing is correct. You have to ask yourself. You have to pray. Lord, how do you want me to love you today? If what I'm doing is not loving anymore, Lord, then hindi mo na ito law. Hindi mo ito teaching. Say, today. Sabi nyo, today. Picture, picture niyan. You ask yourself that every morning. Lord, how do you want me to love you today? When you're faced with a decision sa trabaho, should I do this? Should I take this? Should I follow this? Lord, how do you want me to love you today? This topic is controversial. I just want to warn you. But it's very educational and very inspirational if you give God a chance. And I want to talk to you as mature people. Say mature. Mature pala, hindi mature. Si Brother Randy, mature. Because we'll study the Bible as the experts in the Bible study the Bible. So I'm not going to treat you as kids anymore because matatanda na kayo lahat. You're older than me, all of you. But this will in- give us inspiration and will free us Amen? Tell the, uh, declare this. Speak to me, Lord. Let's give a round of applause. Even the word Deuteronomy says that message. Deuteronomy literally means second Torah. Pakasabi, second Torah. Huh? Second Torah? So, anong third? Brother to, adiyan, anong third Torah? Kung Deuteronomy is second Torah, third Torah, trigonometry. Brother to, why, why, third, uh, why second Torah? So, ibig sabihin, brother to, may first Torah, tapos may second Torah na pumalit sa first Torah? Is that what it means to have a second Torah? Well, you'll find out tonight. First of all, let's recall, the first Torah was presented to Exodus to the first generation of the Jews who left Egypt. So, we know the Jews left Egypt, then they roamed around the wilderness for ilang years? 40 in the Bible means one generation. So, ibig sabihin, lahat na umalis sa Egypt, patay na by the time na sa promised land na ang karamihan na natira. So, the first Torah was applicable to the first batch. The second Torah is now applicable to this batch because of a certain reason. So, brother to, what's the reason? Why rewrite the first Torah? Di ba unchanging dapat si Lord? Di ba dapat the laws are the same for Evs? Bahit nagbago. Catch this. Loving God in the desert may be different from loving God in the promised land. Loving God in the desert can be different from loving God in the promised land. Here's a better way. It's not changing. It's not replacing the loss. It's updating. Updating. Say updating. For those who don't know, I'm an engineer. Ang trabaho ko po meron kaming equipment from Germany na import dito from Germany to install in hospitals. So that's hospital industry ako, hospital supplier ako. Meron kami isang project sa Alabang na may bago kami equipment. Yung bagong equipment namin is the latest generation, the latest model of our old equipment. Old equipment namin yung pindutan, para meron pang mga buttons, may keypad. Yung latest generation namin, digital na. Wow, para kang may phone. So yung pindutan mo, touchscreen. Meron kami project na na-close ko no 2018 sa Alabang, yun nga sinasabi ko, our first of this new technology. So 2018, pinio ko, pinio sa amin, pinio ko sa Germany, binili namin, dumating dito 2018. Eh, ang tagal tapusin yung building in, sa Labang. Ang tagal matapos. As in, it took years and years. And ang pandemic pa. So from 2018 to 2023, ngayon lang namin natapos installation. Kasi hindi pa, wala pang kuryente, si Meralco, hindi pa ready yung site, ginagawa pa yung gusali, etc. So when we were about 
to start this, the process of commissioning, you call it commissioning, startup and commissioning, nung isa startup na namin system, biglang hindi nag-work. We had to fly in a friend from Malaysia, one of the technicians na magaling. Dinala namin from Malaysia dito so that he can do it. Alam mo sabi sa akin, uh, to, this system is old. You bought it 2018, it's not applicable anymore. So kinabahan ako kasi nabili na yun eh. Alam man, i-order ko ulit at saka ito ka sa while to install. Buti lang sabi niya, the good thing is since it's digital, you can just update it on air, on the air. Ano tawag doon? On air, on OTA. Over the air? Basta. Internet. You can download the update on the internet and make it brand new. Your phone, sino sa team Apple? Raise your hands. Si Rain lang. Siya lang. Siya lang. Android. Team Android. Ayan. Lahat ayan. Hindi <laughs> na ako magbaba. Sorry. Android. Pero di ba, when a new operating system comes, na hindi na relevant yung old, what do you do? You update. And when you click the update button, i-update siya on the air, and eventually brand new na yung phone nyo. Yung system namin in-install, na, na, patak, na patakba na namin, maganda. Actually, it's a very good system. Same with the laws of Moses. The old laws, you don't change it. The Lord is not saying change it. He's just saying update it to your current time and place. That's what the promised land Israelites said. Yung laws nung una, hindi applicable kasi laws nung desierto yon. Pero ngayon na nasa promised land na tayo, Let's update it. Tell someone beside you, update your faith. In accelerate. Hashtag. <laughs> update. So that's it. We're not changing the loss. We're not replacing the loss. We're simply updating it. And so, your guide is always going to talk. Brother Tosi, how will I know if I update it? Na okay pa rin. Simply, still ask that same question. Lord, how do you want me to love you today? Because if you follow the old laws, hindi na applicable sa um, 2023 generation Filipino yon. It's applicable to a generational ancient Jew in that ancient time. So memorize this, screenshot that, post that, pray that. Lord, how can I, I love you today? Can we give a little round of applause? Okay, get it, get it? So we're going to learn more about that through the book of De Deuteronomy. We're going to update our faith. Okay, so hashtag, update your faith. You know, you post it then. All right, so Deuteronomy continues to be controversial and groundbreaking in their day. Ngayon medyo hindi na eh, dahil alam na natin nangyari. Pero in their day, naging controversial in Deuteronomy when Moses gave these laws. The centerpiece of the book of Deuteronomy is called the Shema. Pakasabi, Shema. Or Shema. It is the heart of Deuteronomy. The, 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 the essence of Deut Deuteronomy is the Shema. The Shema is the heart of Moses' opening speech. Ang unang salita ni Moses, ang unang speech niya sa book of Deuteronomy is called the Shema. Let's read this. Shema kasi also means here. Baka sabi here. Here is the first word in the command. So we're going to read what Moses said. What Moses said to the Israelites as they were about to enter the promised land. Moses said, together, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Familiar? Parang kilala ko yung ganyang salita. But it's, it was in, Moses was the first to say it, and it's in Deuteronomy, and it's in the Shema. The Shema is so sacred, this first opening statement, that pinipray ng Jewish people to every day. Ginawa nilang prayer to. And they don't just pray it once a day, they pray it twice. Sa umaga at sa gabi. They make this their regular thing, their regular, bless us, O Lord. They pray that, we can do that. That's a beautiful prayer to pray every morning and every night. So, the first truth that we can get from the book of Deuteronomy as we begin this journey is a statement here, the Lord is one. Can you say that? Brother, to, 
that sounds normal. That sounds logical. Alam naman natin, the Lord is one. But when Moses spoke to the Israelites who were about to enter the promised land, the second generation, controversial to at that time because they lived in a polytheistic universe back then. Imagine, you're an Israelite. You came from the wilderness. Your parents died in the wilderness, nagaling Egypt. Papasok na sa promised land. When you look at your neighbors, you came from Egypt. Egypt had many gods. Egypt worshipped different gods. Ra, uh, Ra, Isis, Osiris. iba gods. You look to your neighbors. The Canaanites worship Baal, Asherat, Anat. Mesopotamians, another land near you, they worship Marduk, Ishtar, Anu. So maraming gods ang ibebang civilization. And here is the God of Israel who said, The Lord is one. The Lord is one. So the Israelites, ha? Huh? Okay, the Lord is one. Sa atin normal yan eh, because we know the Lord is one. But do we follow that? Let me pause. Is the Lord our only God? Or do we worship other gods? Like the pagans, like the Egyptians, like the Canaanites. We still kind of, if we search your heart, we can kind of worship other gods. One, for example, is our phone our God? Kasasabi lang iPhone, tsaka Android eh. Is your phone, do you worship your phones? Ano yung una mong kinukuha sa umaga, pagising? Kamay ba ng misis mo? Kamay ba ng mister mo? O cellphone mo? Kasi nauna na siya, nasa cellphone na siya. Sino sa inyo pag nakaalis ng bahay, makalimutan na ang wallet, makalimutan na yung asawa, makalimutan na yung anak, wag lang ang cellphone. I'm not saying it's bad to have a phone, but check your heart. Is your phone in the God status? that you're worshiping it too much. And if you don't have your phone, para hindi kompleto, can you go through a meeting without posting about the meeting? Can you go through a lunch without taking a photo? That's a good guide. I'm not saying I'm not guilty of that. But it's a good guide. Kasi baka naman pati yung phone natin, sinasa just na, parang just na natin. So, check yourself. Does your phone take God's place? Another God. We say, oh my, Egyptians, maraming gods. Baka tayo rin. Another God? Do we worship another God? Do we worship the number of likes we get when we post in FB, in IG, in TikTok? Sino siya refresh ng refresh? Bakit wala nagla-like? Nag-post ako kanina. Ang ganda ng post ko. Ganda na angle ng, ano, good angle ko pa na may pinost ko. Okay lang yun eh. I mean, that's normal. But if it has come to a point that your self-esteem is affected and you feel bad about yourself because no one liked your post, then maybe God's status na ang social media presence mo. Has your desire to be liked, to be hearted, to be cared, taken the place of your God? Or there are other gods, and I just leave this to you. Check nyo na lang. Has power become your God? The desire to accumulate power, to lord it over other people, or has popularity become your God? Kailangan, brother, to influencer ako. Kailangan maraming mag-follow ng advice ko. Has possessions become your God? Brother, to wala akong bagong bagay sa mga ng mundo ko. Brother, to kung wala akong staycation, hindi ako okay. Check yourself. If your self-esteem is dependent on other things except God, other than God, then baka they have become your God. Say this again. The Lord should be one. So Deuteronomy is telling us that tonight. Do not worship your phone. Do not worship your addictions. Do not worship your weaknesses. Do not worship yourself even. Love yourself, yes. But you're not your God. That's why we need to pray the Shema. More than ever, we need to declare and declare again, the Lord is one. Isa lang ang Diyos sa buhay ko. And like any talk in the feast, I hope sa many points na dineliver sa'yo sa gabing ito, just take what you need. Maybe this is the message that God is speaking to you and, and okay na kayo. Tell someone beside you, declare this, God is my God. Tell someone beside you, worship 
our, uh, worship only our one true God. Let's give Lord a round of applause. All right. Okay. So, by the way, di ba familiar yung Shema? The Lord your God, yeah, hero Israel, the Lord your God is one God. Tapos, you should love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength. Sino nagsabi nun? Naalala nyo? Si Jesus, di ba? Bakit niya sinabi yun? One day, a religious leader approached Jesus and challenged him, Jesus, Rabbi, Teacher, what is the greatest commandment of all the 613 commandments in the Bible or in the Torah? This relig- religious leader wanted to trap Jesus and a- engage in a, in a fiery debate. Kasi alam niya, huhulihin ko to. Kung sumagot siya ng isang law na medyo hindi great, ah, patay siya. So this religious teacher appeared to be inquisitive, but he was actually really part trying to interrogate Jesus. And ang gulat niya, Jesus answered him, the greatest commandment was not one of the 613 laws. Ready na yun eh. Parang may ready ng sagot yung ano eh. debate na yung religious leader. So Jesus, instead of choosing one of those laws, He chose the Shema of the Jews. Their daily prayer, which they learned as a child. Kaya ang galing, ang brilliant ni Lord. Ang galing niya. Jesus chose that. In a surprising twist, this is what Jesus told him, the religious leader. The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the, uh, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Tameme yung religious leader. Kasi hindi niya naisip, ang galing ah. Ang galing ng rebuttal. Brilliant. Brilliant save. Amazing wisdom. Kinapit ni Lord yung mas malapit sa puso nila lahat. They all memorize this. This is their daily prayer. And meaning, ang ganda nga naman meaning. Of all the commandments, of all the things you do, thou shall not kill, thou shall not commit adultery, thou shall not, um, thou shall not overfeed your pet. Mga ganun, sa lami ng law, ang sinabi ni Jesus, love the Lord with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, all your strength. Ang galing. And ang Shema is not just hero Israel. When you hear the word, or when you see the word hero Israel, may deeper meaning yan. Shema is such a re- robust word. It means both hearing and obeying. Say that. Hear, hear. obey. Let's see that slide. Hear and obey. Wag mo lang pakinggan ang, ang law ni God, pero gawin mo rin. Therefore, the com- greatest commandment of God means loving God with all your heart, with all your strength, with all your mind, with all your soul. Love God with your head, with your heart, with your hands. Don't just memorize the law and hear it, but live it out. And this doesn't just mean hear it once. Brother to, sige, papakanggan ko in every Holy Week. I will listen to the Bible every Holy Week or read the Bible every Holy Week or every Thursday. But you do it Daily. You need to update your faith. Don't just keep it there, locked in your knowledge base. You need to listen regularly to God's instruction for you for the day. Sino siya nagba morning prayer? Don't raise your hand anymore. Pray daily, Lord, and how can I love you today? Iba yung Thursday sa Wednesday. Yung ginawa ko sa Wednesday, baka ibang kailangan ko gawin today. Hear daily, listen daily, and obey daily, regularly. Lord, how can I apply what I learned and heard today? You got to update your faith. Say that. Update your faith. Because God can be telling you something different today than what He told you yesterday. That's why laging dapat updated. Because listening, because loving God is an ongoing relationship. So keep listening because loving God is an ongoing relationship. Sino sa in a relationship right now? Don't raise your hands anymore. Taas yung kanang kilay nyo. I just realized this week is my 25th anniversary with Anne as boyfriend and girlfriend. 
kasi we're married 21 years. So, pero nag, nag, naging un kami. Sinagot ko siya nung 25 years ago. <laughs> Sinagot ko siya. Wala naman. Hindi siya, siya nakikinig. So, 25 years na kami this week. Grabe, silver na pala, pala, pala kami. Yeah, 15 years old kami noon. Nag-start kami. <laughs> kami. Okay. So, what keeps us strong? Because we have a relationship. Is What keeps us strong is we don't do the same things that we did before now. Gets nyo? I need to update my love for her daily. Yung ginawa namin dati, nung bata pa kami at payat pa ako, hindi na applicable ngayon. You get it? That's why you have to update things always. It being a relationship, it should be vibrant. It should be dynamic. It should be updated. Sabi nga na isa, uy, nag-chat sila, uy, Daily na tayo nag-update. In-update ko yung buhay mo. In-update mo yung nangyari sa buhay mo. In-update ko nangyari sa buhay ko. Ano na tayo? Sabi ng girl, ay, updated na tayo. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> My wife and I, we have to love each other in a different way today than we did 25 years ago. Kung hindi, hindi na applicable. Because a lot of things have changed today than it did in 1998. Nag-compute. Tama, 25 yan. Because ngayon may corgi na kami. We have a little boy, a little dog. Iba na yung, dati wala kaming ganun eh. Wala kami inaalagang ganun. Ngayon, we're getting older. I'm, if you would not believe it, next. I'm turning 50 next in January. Hindi mo ka, no? Parang, parang 60, ano? <laughs> so we're now in our 50s. Dati ba, ba? Kami yung youngest in the group before. Kami laging youth group. Ngayon kami na yung kuya. Next, hindi pa tito, ano? So, iba na yung dynamics ngayon sa dati. And so, we have to update the way we love each other. So, dapat laging ganon. In your relationship with God, it should always also be updated. Update things daily. Don't use the old way of loving Him. Pray, teach me, Lord, how to love you anew every day. Even Jesus updated. Ito nakakatuwa. Even si Lord, nag-update si Jesus. Diba? Ano tinanong ni, ni, kay Lord? What is the greatest commandment? The Lord said, the greatest commandment is, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. But even Jesus, He changed things. He updated. He said, there's a second commandment close to that. Jesus felt the Shema as well. Jesus felt that the Shema by itself is not complete. Hindi kompleto yung one na yun. What is the greatest commandment? Hindi lang yun. He believed something had to be added, updated. He didn't just give one great command, he gave two. And so Jesus quoted the second commandment. And he didn't get it also from the 16, 613 laws. He got it from Leviticus. He said it, and together with the number one and number two, it became our moral compass. Jesus said, the second commandment is... Love your neighbor as yourself. There's no commandment greater than these. Kaleng. Ganda ng hirit ni Lord no tinanong siya. Ganda ng reply niya. He didn't give one commandment. He updated dalawa. Love God, love your neighbor. Love God, love your neighbor. Galing na. And so I love it how Jesus is revolutionary. And all throughout the Gospels, mapapansin mo, Jesus would say that the law of Moses says this, but this is what I say. Diba? The law of Moses says, do not feed on the Sabbath, do not heal on, or do not work on the Sabbath. Jesus healed someone on the Sabbath. Bawal yun. What did Jesus do? He updated the law and said, for this generation, the law is about love, not about following a law. So Jesus is the first rule breaker, the first updater. And that's what we do. And again, the bottom line is, Lord, how can I love you today? Because Jesus is all about love. Let's give a round of applause. Tell somebody beside you, update your faith. I remember the feast Makati began in 2009. Sino sa inyong buhay na nun? 2009, the feast in Makati began in, where was the first home? Trivia? AIM. Yeah, where we used to feast before the pandemic. So 2009, um, you would see, actually now you would see serving you today still is me and my wife. Kami one of the originals done. But if you were 
part, sino, may part ba of the feast in 2009? Raise your hands. Yan. Si Amabel, si Tita Glo. Sino pa? 2009, yan. Yan. Sino yan? Si Tin? Ay, hindi ko nakita. Sa ilaw. Tin, yan. So, if you were part of the feast in 2009, there were other relovas who are part of the feast. But you don't see them as often as me and Anne right now. My sisters, Mara and Lisi, were regularly a part of the feast. Mara would lead worship. Mara would lead our discipleship community. She would also preach at times. Let's show a photo of the family um, in one of our Sabado morning gimmicks. And also in that, that may mga sports fest kami. Wag nyo nang laitin yung payat na guide na nasa kanan. <laughs> Goals. Mara, my sister Mara on, in blue, would lead worship. She would um, sing as well. She would lead the, the, the discipleship ministry. She would preach, especially the mga Jesus encounter. My sister Lisi on, on her right would also would be the head of our events. She in charge sa mga program natin, sa mga gimmicks si Lisi on. Like me and Anne, they would serve every week. Every week nandun sila, bringing people, leading, doing their functions. Like us, parang pareho kami. To the point that Brother Randy called the feast, the Relova feast. Kasi ang mga nasa council, mga relova. But because life happened, unti-unting nag-lessen yung kanilang attendance. First of all, my sister Mara got married to her husband Sam. Lisi eventually, sister Lisi ko, she met her husband in the first Love Life Retreat, 2010. So calling all singles, wala lang. <laughs> I'm not saying it will happen, but it has happened. <laughs> So Lisi met her husband in Love Life Retreat, and now they're happily married. They have two kids. Mara has two kids. Lisi has two kids. So for very intense serving servants, na halos every week, they would give their all to Jesus, serving, bringing people, doing their functions. When they stopped serving in the same capacity because they got married, they got pregnant, they, they had kids, they would tell us na medyo nagigilty sila. Kasi, kuya, hindi na ako nakaserve like before. I couldn't really, like Mara lives not in Makati, Lisi lives um, also not in Makati, and it was not, it's not easy for them to come here to serve. And so they would feel guilty and say, hindi na kami nakaserve like before. Kaw- hindi ba tama? Mali na ba to? Na hindi na namin nagagawa? And I love what Brother Randy, our district builder, who was the builder before, he told them, your mission field is now your family. Do not feel guilty because your mission field is now your family. And I love it because they updated their service. They're still serving God in the same intensity as they did when they were here at the feast, but they're now serving God through their kids, Rafi and Noah for Mara, Sky and Sab for Lisi. And that's equal to what we're doing. We are preaching, we're leading you. In the same intensity is what they're doing there. And it's okay. So, if the Lord brings you from the desert into the promised land, kailangan hindi na, hindi necessarily same ang ginagawa mo. Pwede mong i-update ko ano yung kailangan ng current mong situation. For those watching online, if you can't make it here because of your other mission fields, don't worry. Just join us online. For those who are here, if you're blessed here, then update your faith. Maybe it's time for you to serve here and make this your new way of giving back to God. Because, again, I say that again, because loving God in the desert may be different from loving God in the promised land. You get it? Update your mission field. It can be different from before, but it's just as important if it's for God. Can we give a round of applause? Reach to someone beside you, type it in the comments, serve where he calls you to serve today. Amen. And this lesson is seen all throughout Deuteronomy. I want to end with this. Let's learn the structure of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy, as the opening talk, consists of many speeches of Moses, but it's divided into 34 chapters. We will not go through all 34 tonight, or not even one. Overview lang. You can divide the 34 chapters into four parts. Let's read this. The outline of Deuteronomy is number one, 
Moses repeats some of the old laws mentioned in Exodus. So in updates, syempre, when you give a speech, kailangan recap para Netflix, last episode. So Moses repeats some of the old laws mentioned in Exodus. Next, Moses talks about what those old laws look like when applied to this new time and place. Galeng, si Moses nag-update. Number three, Moses also gives new laws for the promised land. So nag-update si Moses, ito may bago tayong gagawin kasi nandito na tayo. And finally, Moses gives his blessing for the new leader who will take his place. Sino yung bagong leader? Yung pumalit kay Moses? Vice President niya. Sino yung Vice President ni Moses? Si Joshua. So ang galing, ano? Moses, this is Deuteronomy in a nutshell, and we're gonna go through that for this next eight weeks after this. So, before that, if you read this, if, as you read Deuteronomy in the next few weeks, mapapansin mo, nakakalito. Kasi kausap ni Moses, para nakakalito. It's very confusing because he's talking about, he's talking to different groups of people. When you read, when he, oh, because when he talks at the first part of the Bible, he would say, Kayo nagrebel, Kayo nagdisobey. Brother to, di ba kausap niya yung mga anak na ng mga umalis? E di ang nagrebel, hindi na sila, pero yung magulang nila. Bakit kausap niya sila? Gets? Moses is confusing. Inisip mo, baka matanda na. Baka may dementia na si Moses. Pero he spoke to these people, the new people, as, and sinabi, kayo, you disobeyed. Kayo nagrebel. And siguro sila, hindi ako yun, tatay ko yun. They died in the desert. Why are you talking to me as if ako yun? Ako na next generation. So nakakalito. When Mo, nakakalito who Moses was really talking to. And so tanong, brother to, who is Deuteronomy speaking to? Sino yung kausap ni Moses? Sino yung kausap ng author ng Deuteronomy through this book? I believe this confusion on who Moses is really speaking to was intentional. Say intentional. The author did this on purpose here. Because Deuteronomy was speaking to all who were coming home. Deuteronomy the book of Deuteronomy, and Moses was speaking to every person coming home. First of all, the first audience of Moses, he was talking to the second generation of Israelites who were at the doorstep of the promised land. Ito yung mga nandun na, kausap niya, yung kaharap na niya, yung nakakita niya. I'm talking to you because you're coming home to the promised land. The second audience of Moses, Deuteronomy was compiled. In Deuteronomy kasi was not written in real time. Hindi siya post, na uh, late post si ang Bible. It was written naman when they were already in exile in Babylon, 900 years after Moses. And so the book, the book was also speaking to the Jewish exiles who were exiled in Babylon. Kinuli sila ng Babylonians. And they were waiting to go back to Israel, their homeland. So he was talking to, or the Deuteronomy author was talking to the people who were in exile and who longing to come home. Because yes, they wanted to return. And the third audience, Deuteronomy could also be speaking to the Jewish exiles who are now back home in Israel. Nakauwi na sila. Because pinalayan na sila ng Persia, King Darius, allowing them to go home. And they were disappointed, this third batch, they were disappointed kasi pag uwi nila, ang gulo ng Jerusalem. Bahay nila, kalat-kalat na, sira-sira na, ransacked and destroyed. Kala ko ba promise land to? Anong promise to? Parang hindi na keep. Brother to, is there a fourth audience? The earth, these are three audiences that Moses was speaking to. Who is the fourth audience that Deuteronomy is talking to? Maybe that's why Moses seemed vague, cryptic, confusing. Para kasama tayo sa kausap niya. We're the fourth audience. Because tayo rin, we always need to come home. This is why the series is called Dear Prodigals. Because it's not just speaking to the ancient Israelites coming home, but to us. 
because we're prodigals as well. Because in various times, we have left home. We too didn't enter into God's plans for us. We insisted our own ways and said, Lord, I want to do my thing. I don't want any part of yours. I want to be exiled. We too didn't enter His plans. Let's see that slide. Deuteronomy is a book written to all prodigals. Okay, I love this book. I'm excited about it. I want God to speak to me and to you because I am a prodigal son. You are a prodigal son and daughter. Put your hands over your heart. Say this. Game Lord, speak to me through this book. Speak to me through the series. I'm coming home to you. I'm back this time. I'm back for good. Can I ask you to stand? Can we call the team on stage? So join us for Deuteronomy. Is there nine talks? So do we have eight more to go? Hopefully you can make it here. There's no greater place to hear this but here. But if you can't, online is the next best thing. Allow God to bless your life anew and speak to you through a fantastic journey of Deuteronomy. One day Jesus told a powerful tale about a son who rebelled against his father. This son said, Dad, I na. Can I get all the money? Lat ng mana, lat ng portion ko, pakay cash, pakay sa cash ko. Alis na ako dad. I'll do my own thing. And he left. He rebelled. We don't niya. But it came to a point that he lost everything. And everything in his life was destroyed. And it came to a point na wala na siyang, walang wala na siya. He had to eventually just to eat ten to pigs. Inalagaan niya mga mga baboy just for him to survive and have a place to sleep. To the point that even doon, wala siya makain. Gusto niya kainin yung kanin baboy. This young man became poor. He squandered it all. And Jesus said this about him. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country who sent him into the fields to feed pigs. We know this story. I know you're, you're, you know what I'm talking about. It's a prodigal son story. We know this, right? He becomes so hungry. Gusto niya sana. Ako na lang kakain ng kinakain nila. Ano ba kinakain nila? Lechon? Di pwede. And he decided in his misery, maybe it's time to come home. Alam ko my father will not accept me anymore, pero sana kahit maging empleyado na lang niya ako o maging alipin na lang niya ako, basta't makabalik lang ako at makakain, mas masarap ay kinakain ng yaya ko dati sa kinakain ko ngayon. Para lang makakain ako let. why don't I come home? Now, we've heard this story hundreds of times. Brother to, I've heard that. I preached that. We know this story is a multiple lesson extracting story. Dami lessons to. To the point na medyo naging manhid na tayo sa message ng prodigal son story. But I just want to tell you something tonight. And this I didn't realize until the study of this message tonight. Manhid na tayo because we've heard it a lot this time. But imagine you're a Jew listening it to the story from Jesus, this teacher called Jesus, for the first time. And he's talking about a son who left and wanted to come back. Sigurado kong umiyak ka if you were a Jew listening to this. Because you realize this is your story. This is, this is the Jewish story. This isn't an ordinary story. This is his story for the Jew. Because the Jews were exiled. They were captured by the Babylonians. 
They were exiled in Egypt and they longed to come home. And so when Jesus said, the prodigal son in misery away from his home wanted to come home, nakarelate sila lahat. That's me. That's my ancestry. We were exiled. We were miserable. We were in hell. And we all wanted to come back to our promised land, to come back to our home. Every Jewish person wanted to come home. It's ingrained in their hearts. And so, nakaroon a meaning in prodigal son story sa akin because of that. Because Jesus was not just talking of a story analogy. He was talking about every person listening at that day. And the thing is, how did the father accept his coming home? If we were the father, kung tayo, lalo na kung tayong nanay, we would always say, sinabi ko na sa'yo eh, aalis-alis ka dyan. Ngayon, bebeg-beg kang bumalik. Sige na nga, balik ka. Babalik ka naman, pero maraming hear it. <laughs> Not to shame any mother here or any mother in the Philippines, but that's a common joke. But how did the father welcome his son home? Let's read this. While, but while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion and ran and embraced him and kissed him. The father did not stay in his home, in his mansion, waiting for his son to beg. He ran. There's a song that goes there, When God Ran. Beautiful song. I Spotify check nyo yan. Maiyak lang kayo sa song yan. When God Ran. Ganda nun. So the beauty of coming home, and I speak to everyone who needs to come home, is you're not just coming home, you're coming home to a loving, welcoming, waiting, Father. So if you feel unworthy of love, unworthy of forgiveness, unworthy of God's attention, know that your Father waits. And and daming stories ng prodigal son, but I love this story. How did the Father know that he ran? How did the Father see his son in the distance? One interpretation said, because every single day, the Father looked out of the window at the horizon until he saw his son's figure walking back home. His father saw him and he ran because malayo pa lang, nakaabang na siya. Every day that his son wasn't with him, naghihintay siya. God is waiting for you to come home, brother, sister. It's not a burden for God for you to say, Lord, forgive me. Ah. God says, come, son. Come, daughter, I have been looking out for you to come home. I've been waiting for you to come through the path. And he didn't wait for him to come. He ran to him, embracing him, loving him. Because God missed him. And God misses you. That's the God we serve. That's the God we love. A God who misses us. Hindi siya nagpaparinig. He says, I run to you, my child. Just come home. It's time to return to him, brother. It's time to return to him, sister. He asked her, Lord, I'm ready to update my faith. How can I serve you now? In this point in my history, how can I best love you? And ask him, and pray this every day. Lord, how do you want me to love you today? It's time to come home. Let's worship the Lord. Thank you, Father, for reminding us who you are in our lives. We thank you for reminding us that you are our constant. You are always there just waiting for us waiting for us to come home. We don't need an invitation, but we know, Lord, that you will meet us where we are. 
and whatever we're holding on to at the moment that we hold on because we're ashamed we are not fully aware of how you would love us we let them go so that you can we can let God love us and we thank you Jesus for reminding us of who you are and how you can save us how you can love us we pray Lord to receive all your blessings for us today in Jesus name we pray
God who rescues, the God who saves, and the God who calls us home. Before we sit down, I think the Lord is asking us as well to update our faith, to update how we feast. We have been feasting in AIM for her since 2019. compute. We're now in our new home with new friends, new feasters, new servants. So I think we have to ask us as a feast, Lord, how can we love you in this season of our feast? You who are here are part of our feast. This is, we have a unique culture, a unique venue, a unique brand, a unique style. And so just continue serving, seeking, attending, feasting with us. And together, let's change the world together. Amen? Let's give a round of applause. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Can okay, you take your seats? Whew, love it. I allow, I, let's allow God to speak to us through Deuteronomy, how He fleshes out an ancient text to a modern way of loving Him this week. All right. Just a few announcements. First of all, first-timers, can I ask all the first-timers in this venue, please stand up. We have a prayer for you. Stand up, please. Any first-timer here in the audience, please stand up. We have, we'll pray for you. Welcome, June. Anyone else? Old-timers sa lahat? Old-timers na nandita? For those who are first-timers in the audience watching online right now, please stand up. No, we're going to pray for you as well. You can stand up, sis. We're going to pray. Can you extend your hands towards our friend? our new friends who will join us, whether online or on-site. Father, we thank you for the gift of new friends who you brought to this feast because of your purpose. We thank you for the gift of them, and we pray for a blessing to flow their way. They have come here, Lord Jesus, out of your invitation, and we pray that they have honored you by coming and by watching and by feasting. Bless them back, Lord Jesus, a billion fold. Bless their families, bless their health, bless their life, bless their income stream, bless everything, Lord Jesus, so that they can experience your joy and love you in a new way in this season, through this feast. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining us. After the feast, all our first-timers, please go to that. And, you know, Julius, Julius will welcome you with a special gift after this feast. Yeah. All right. Um, next, we were not able to do this last week. I last week. But can I ask all the August birthday celebrants to please come on stage. Pede, pede. August birthday celebrants, please come on stage. We're going to pray for you. We're a family feast. We're going to do this as a family. Wala, wala, wala. Kuya Ruben, wala. Aligay, aligay. We're going to pray for you. Aligay, aligay. Marcado na kayo. Happy birthday, Kuya Ruben. You know, si Jeffo. Happy birthday. Si Olay. You know. Si oh. I think it's si Jay's first birthday, Ren. Hi, Jay's. Come here, Jay's. Yeah, we're a family freeze. Free, freeze. Oh, yun. Sirika. Fats. Fats, kaba birthday lang this weekend. Hi, Jay's. Jay's, is, Jay's birthday is today. Happy birthday, Jay's. Oh, you face them. We're going to pray for you. Okay. <laughs> tatay niya si Bench birthday, Ren, this August. Next week. All, andito na lahat. We're going to pray for them. Brother Narsing, <laughs> birthday this weekend. Happy birthday, Brother Nars. Ayan. Dito ako, hindi ako birthday, hindi ako January, hindi ako August, so I'll stay here. All right, let's extend our hands to order. So alam niyo yung mukha na maglilibre this month. That's why ilalagay ko sa harap. All right, Father, we thank you for life that you, that you give and that we celebrate for these people here in front and for those who are online who are August celebrants. We thank you for the gift of them and we pray for a birthday blessing for their month this year. We pray that you bless them, Lord Jesus, with what's in their hearts. Bless them with good health, with happiness, with joy, with protection, with safety. But most of all, Lord Jesus, bless them in a way that they can love you in a new way. Teach them and show them how they can love you in a new way, in a fresh mission field. Update their faith and help them to continue to serve you in this new way. In Jesus' name we pray. Happy Happy birthday to you. Dun, 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 dun. Happy birthday dun, 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 dun. to you. Happy birthday. Yeah, we have a gift for everyone. Happy birthday. Hey. 
Bella. Happy birthday, Bella. Happy birthday, Bella. Happy birthday, Bella. Happy birthday, Paul. Si Dear din daw kumuha ng gift ni Bella, kaya hindi na tinawag. A picture na, picture. A picture. Misses ko ayos sumama. Happy birthday, Suzanne. Teka, teka, teka. Clark, Clark, si... First lady. First lady. <laughs> Ayan. Sama mo siya. Sama mo siya. Hello, sir. Uh, picture. Saan mamaya? Happy birthday, August people. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. All right. Thank you for helping us greet our celebrants. We'll do that every month because we're a family feast. All right. Ako gumawa niya. Oh. I made that, Jace. I made that cake. All right. Just a few announcements. Again, please take part of the feast. Uh, we'll just flash the bless slogan. Just bring someone next week. Join a light group. Eat and partake. Serve here. If you want to serve, just approach any servant. We'll connect you and share. For those who are here, there's a white envelope in your, in your seat. Can you please send the love offering to the feast? For those who are online, we're going to flash our bank account details. Um, ang easiest way to give is through GCash. So if GCash is a way, I mean for those online, bank account, because you have to send a bank deposit slip. Pwede rin naman, but if GCash is easy, send it through a QR code there. It's also in the, in the caption of this broadcast you're watching. Also, make it a point na sana next week may bit-bit kayo. Again, bit-bit means... Bring one to bless one tonight. So bit, bit. So ang Pinoy mahilig mag bit, bit. So try bringing a friend. Again, we can put more seats here. Don't worry. We, the space can fit a lot more. It's easy to... Papalamigay pa natin aircon kung kailangan. Next, please be very updated. For those who are updated, please, I hope minimum everyone follows our page. Everyone knows, right? Facebook. So please follow all our pages. Feast Makati Legaspi on YouTube on Facebook, on Instagram, on TikTok. The fastest way to get all the updates. Meron din tayo Viber group. I hope you're part of the Viber group. You just click, our, go to our website, has a link to the Viber group. Also, meron tayo friends page. Meron tayo group page. So marami yan. It's all on our website, fmly.ph. Next, I'd like to call my wife again to come back because we're going to announce to all the ladies in the house the Jewels Conference 2023. It's happening next week na kasi. So let's play this video. Can all the women in the house watch this? It's August 19th, Saturday, SMX Convention Center, Manila. Beyond. Let's welcome the jewel of my life. Hello, hello, Olet. Magin ba? It's okay. Na fall. Mm. Ganon talaga effect. The drawal of my life. But anyway, we're inviting all the women. So that's next Saturday, na. It's a whole day at SMX. You can still get your tickets. Avail of it. We have the regular tickets. We have the premium ticket. And um, mas maganda kasing ano you'll be there on site in person and we really would like to encourage you you've seen the 
the the speakers, the pool of speakers, and also the only men, two men, who, who will be on stage will be the priest because there's a mass. And we also have Brother Bo uh, Sanchez to, to speak, no? uh, to be one of the guest preacher. So it's going to be an exciting day. And at the same time, um, maraming learnings and it's going to be a full day of worship as well. We'll also have time to share with other women. So I really, really encourage you to join, be with us, and um, iba pa rin yung usapang babae. Kasi just a quick kwento lang, yes, last night, I was with some of the builders' wives of the Mega Manila. Imagine, a few lang kami, sis Maru, the wife of Brother Bo, sis Lalaine, the wife of Brother Alvin, the, dis, the district of the mega builder, na? Uh, uh, Brother Arun pala, sorry. Brother Arun was there on the, the build, mega Manila builder, district builder. A few of us palang women, grabe na yung sharing. For, for the moms here, yung you can finally share. For the singles, all your, alam yung sharing lang na, your frustrations, your dreams, your aspirations. Just be with women, iba pa rin. So I really encourage you to be there, women. Um, invite your moms, invite your sisters, invite your friends, invite your office mates, all the women, invite them. And let's celebrate on that special day next week na. Thank you. And if you, if you buy your ticket online, sulit nyo lang doon. You're from Feast Makati District to represent FMD. Okay? So thank you and see you. Baka ma-fall ka na naman. <laughs> Nabubulabog ako pag nandiyan si Anne. Nasipa ko na si... Alright, so women, please, if you, uh, do yourself this favor if you can. Once a year lang to. Um, this is an investment in a way, but invest in your growth. This will bless you back. If you need someone to pray over you, if you need someone to talk to, just approach our the back. We have a pray over account, uh, a pastoral care corner in the back. And please join us next Thursday. Talk number two next week is entitled, Remember. So on this week, come home. Next week, about remember. We're going to talk about not having spiritual dementia. So abangan nyo and just be here next Thursday. All right, can you lift up your love offerings? We're going to pray. Again, I hope you help us out financially so we can continue doing this. And I love how we're growing. I love how we're growing. God is here. Father, we thank you for the ability to give. Thank you, Lord, for the generosity of hearts for those who are helping out so that we can give more and reach more, Lord Jesus, through your word. We pray for a blessing to flow back, Lord, to every giver tonight. Show them, Lord Jesus, that the, their generosity can never match yours. Flow back into their hearts, into their pockets, into their lives. More love, more blessings, more abundance, more joy, more healing. Heal those who need healing. Bless those who need the blessing. Sir, uh, save those who need a miracle right now. And because they have said yes to you, Lord, by following you and obeying you and by giving, show them, Lord Jesus, your, your bounty back. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. As you give, God bless you, brothers and sisters. Let's have coffee in the back. See you next Thursday at the Feast Mahati Legaspi. God bless you. Invite to please stand and yeah. sing with us.
God, together as we pray, glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as to us in the beginning, is now, and forever shall be, world without end. And we say, Amen and Amen. God bless everyone. See you at the back. See you next week.